ねえ And it's teaching him how not to cut his finger. So right. I show him, you know, how you use your finger not yet to protect and the knife. And I was showing him, you can watch me, you see, I'm looking at you and I cut it. And I can do it because I've been doing that so many years. But I always saw that if you don't do that, you keep your eye on the blade. Same thing when you play golf. Keep the eye on the ball. Otherwise, you can miss the shot. Right. Very good. <laughs> He's wanted to be a chef for many years. Um, Sherry Tucker is our our foods teacher here, foods and nutrition teacher here in the building, and um, you know she kind of like planted that seed years ago. And uh, yeah, he's been cooking for our whole staff here for two years. Wow. The two years that he took her class mm -hmm. and in the ad building, and mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, he. Um, and but Francois really feels this is something you can do, and yeah. you know, this is how you're going to do it. So we were talking about your dream, and I wondered why you picked this particular dream. What's uh, that? Um, I, I want a living. <laughs> I want to be able, I can um, make some money. Um, I, it's, it's to have my own restaurant, to be that deaf chef, to bring in deaf people into my restaurant. Um, and, you know, to be able to also earn a living doing what I love. Why do you love it? Oh, so... I don't know. It was something that I, you know, I remember watching, you know, uh, people and then tasting different food and just really starting to love food at that point. Um, you know, not the simple stuff, not the processed stuff, not the stuff that you can get anywhere, but the complex foods. I, I wanted to learn the different techniques um, with cooking. It was just something I was interested in. Have you thought about going to college? Is that in the future? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, because I want to go to culinary okay. school. Okay. I'm going to go to MCTI and take their yeah. program at first. Yeah. And then yeah. I want to go, yeah. um, they've got the uh, yeah. it's Art Institute over towards Detroit yeah. that has a culinary program. Yeah. But I, you know, I need to work with my English. I need to work yeah. with my vocab. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm going to go to MCTI first, mm -hmm. go through their program, yeah. and then transfer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Transfer to go to culinary school, but right now I'm, you know, I'm taking my time. I'm just learning as I go, you know. And once I get to that point, you know, there's a process that you have to go through. And once I improve my reading and my English and everything, then I'll go to MCTI. I'll be ready for MCTI. Go through their program and then go on to the Art Institute, you know, and get my certification. He's come a long, long way, um, and it's not been an easy road for him. He's really. Um, persevered and uh, he's been frustrated a lot and um, but he's he's you know rose to the occasion and but his strength is amazing and I'll go back to he didn't have to be here he was his own guardian he could have walked out those doors any day but he didn't and he stayed and to me that's a strength and that is an ability to surpass some pretty dark and dismal years, not days, years, and for him to come out like this and just to be this wonderful young man. Tony has this uh, wonderful personality, he's very charming and he's very gregarious in his, in his attitude towards life, his big smile, you know, he has welcoming personality. So you look at Tony and you know you want to be a part of that you know he just is that kind of a person you know um, he has really good eye contact and uh, you know you and, and he is very patient with people signing to him and he doesn't give up easily on communicating you know he's very street smart uh, 
So he has a confidence about him that way that allows him to, to be comfortable in that arena. So how did you meet Francois? Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. Um, I had gone to Goodwill to their oh, career oh. camp. Um, oh, and it was kind of like um, to get me ready for the working force. And um, uh. Goodwill had said that they had heard that the Henderson Castle was looking for a dishwasher. Oh. And so they had got a hold of me and they let me know. Oh. Um, and I, you know, asked him where, when, and I came here for an interview and I had an interpreter. Jamie Ricks was my interpreter. Um, and the interview went pretty well. Um, there were some questions that were asked, you know, about my deafness and things like that. And, and then, uh, I came and did my volunteer stuff and, um, I've been with him ever since, you know, I've, I've learned a lot from Francois. We, we have about uh, at least a dozen. Uh, people who came uh, from Cresa to apply for the job from anywhere from 60 years old to 14 years old. Um, different men already, different... Uh, most of the time was young men. I did not see any young woman in this part. Um, and many of them was disadvantaged and are, are suffering from uh, different handicaps. Uh, and Tony obviously was the most uh, disadvantage among all of them uh, due to uh, the fact that he is uh, mute and deaf. Uh, but when I met him, uh, I saw something in his eye was shining, was uh, leading me to believe he was different and he has a huge potential. I can see that. Uh, I mean, you know, when you meet people, and what's interesting here, he could not tell me any lie, he could not uh, uh, fool me because the only thing he can convinced me with was with this eye and he did so because he's a true genuine a human being and uh, I can see um, through his eye that uh, it was a, 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 a must give him a chance. When I went to meet Francois with Tony so that we could all kind of work together of what his goals were, were and how we could meet them at the castle. I said to Francois, you know, these are some things I'd like to see him work on, and this is how we're going to help his vocabulary grow. And um, Francois said, you know, well, you know, I, if he's hearing impaired, that's, you know, we're going to not take that as an excuse because I, Francois is French, and it's hard to understand him. And he said, you know, I don't excuse people not being able to understand me, and I expect him to understand me, and I expect him to be able to do everything else here. And I was like, yay! Because he didn't set low expectations. He looked at Tony the way we look at Tony, the way Tony looks at himself. And what's been the toughest thing about holding a job here? In the beginning, um, it was as time went on. In the beginning, it seemed easy. And then as time went on, it seemed like it was hard you know, to get up and just understand that I have to come to work every day. Um, you know, everything was so new and, you know, like when he hires new people, it's also getting new to a new, getting used to a new face and communicating with them. Um, um, but the staff here has been great, um, being able to communicate with me. Um, and you know, and I, the, the big thing is I don't want to make a mistake. I want to make sure that I'm learning and I'm doing things right. And just, you know, make sure that I'm doing things right. Cause I don't want to make a mistake. Uh, Tony um, and Francois can communicate pretty well, you know. Uh, Tony uses his iPhone, you know, we just taught him how to use the notes feature, you know, on there. And, um, you know, so he can type back and forth to people. Yeah. Um, but sometimes there's the, if it's a, a term he doesn't know, a vocabulary word he doesn't know, so then there might be the, oh, oh, and then you got to explain that, and mm -hmm. sometimes that kind of gets to be where there's like the rub mm -hmm. of, you know, how do I explain this? And I don't know sign language. Mm -hmm. So, so, but somehow, you know, Francois finds a way around all that and gets his point across, you know, yeah. as do the, the other employees at the castle. Mm -hmm. They're just marvelous. Does it feel like it takes courage to do what you're doing? Does it feel like that? Yeah. Oh, oh no, it's mm -hmm. fine. 
except, you know, um, it's something with, you know, working here. Um, it's, you know, being in support of the, this castle, of this family. Um, I, I really want good things for Francois. I want good things for this castle. The deaf and the hearing piece doesn't, that doesn't matter. It's just a matter of supporting each other. I'm so pleased and, and happy that Francois is willing to do something like this, to go the extra mile, to um, give up himself, um, because it's, it's, it is a giving of yourself. It's, it's just all about time. And we all know that our lives are really, really busy. And, um, you know, it, it, to give you, of your time is something, you know, more precious than giving of money sometimes. Mm -hmm. But he was willing to take the time out to work with this young man, to mentor this young man, to make this young man part of his family. And Tony will tell you that is his family because there they take care of him. They watch out for him. And Francois is very, you know, this is what I expect. This is what I want. If you don't do it, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about it. But it's going to happen next time. But I love you and I care about you. What do you like most about Francois? He really respects his staff. He's very friendly. He, um, there's great communication. Um, you know, you, you can get those bosses that can be really strict or really mean. And Francois is not like that at all. It, it really is a family here. It, he, he really does support his employees. Um, and, the, you know, communication with me is a very, very big thing. And it's, it's never been an issue with Francois. And he, he's different than other bosses. And I really, really like that about him. Very different than other bosses. But kids that don't have a Francois in their lives... Um, it's hard for them, you know, if, um, if there's not someone that's willing to open up, you know, the doors of their store or the doors of their business to, and expect those around them to, um, to embrace that person with a disability, um, especially a kid that doesn't have language or can't communicate. Um, and so, you know, the expectation is for Francois um, to give back to the community and you know and I know that he talks to other leaders in the community and and you know hopes to encourage more people to to do this to do this same thing um, in whatever way they they can um, but yeah that's uh, my wish would be to have you know many many Francois and <laughs> in all of my deaf kids lives yeah Every day we try to guide him the right direction um, by just showing him the right example and, uh, and, and giving him love. And it's, all, it's all about love. At the end of the day, it's all about love. You know? I'm fascinated by it because this is, this, I'm definitely learning. You are? Or oh, no. <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> want to make sure the chicken is hard, tough, when you don't cook it. You see, give me your hand. You see, you can, a, a trick, is you touch like that, rare, medium rare, medium near, well done. So you do like yeah. that. And so then you touch your finger and you can just touch and say, oh, it's about medium rare, medium well. And you have a good indication with your finger to you oh. see? Oh. But first, oh, you need to it. wash your hand mm. before you touch the food. But now, with that, mm. I don't need the finger. I just touch it and I know it's hot. Oh. Mm. oh, okay. So it's just about ready then? Yeah. for hot food. There we go, and you need 
little presentation. You eat with your eye before you eat with your stomach. Yeah. Parmigiano. Green onion. And then black truffle. Just a little touch for the extra flavor would give this. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Ooh, that's strong. But it smells good. Bon appétit. Hot. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 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 uh,